G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we have a massive job ahead of us. We're going to be relocating a Waterbox 130.4 fully established reef aquarium. So it's me and Reefbeard. Let's check out the tank and get into this huge relocation. So Reef Beard is starting with bagging up some of the smaller, more uh, precious frags. There's heaps of frags in this tank, heaps of corals. We're going to be bagging up as much as possible of the loose corals and then putting the big structures into barrels. Let's have a look at the equipment that we've got just over here. When it comes to a job like this, the trick is really to ensure that we've got as much equipment as possible. And we have uh, a number of fish barrels, we've got foam boxes, we've got buckets, we've got fish bags, rubber bands, everything that we need, think that we're going to need plus another 20%. So we're going to start out by bagging up all these corals, reef beads already started, but I'm going to give him a hand because this is probably the uh, most laborious part of the whole job today. So we're going to so we've set up a little production line. Reef Beard is bagging the corals and I'm tying up the bags. And they're going into a box over here. I think we're going to fill at least two of our foam boxes with bags of coral. The reason we're doing it this way is because there's so many delicate, precious little corals in this tank. And if we just put them into a bucket and they're loose, then they'll sting each other, they'll get damaged. This is probably the safest way to move these types of corals, but it takes ages to bag it all up. So we've got probably a third of the frags out of the tank and uh, reef beer is still bagging them up. We're gonna take out these corals on the bottom uh, next, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to have a look at some of the aspects of the tank because it is a really nice tank. And the first thing that I noticed about this tank is that it's actually a bare bottom tank. There's no substrate in this tank. And the fact that there are four wave makers producing really good flow is one of the important things to making a bare bottom tank work. But uh, this uh, green star mat on the bottom of the tank looks so good. There's other corals that are encrusting down on there and it's such a nice tank, which really puts the pressure on us to ensure that this tank relocation goes smoothly. So I'll give you a little tutorial on tying bags without pressurized oxygen. The way that I do it is I hold the bag in a way that the seams of the bag line up and then I fold down the top multiple times, trapping in as much air as possible. And then I gather the top keeping the bag tight, twist in a way that you keep all of that air in the bag. I then take a rubber band, I use my pinky to hold it, my index finger comes through, 
relieves the pinky of the, it's hard to do it in slow motion, relieves the pinky of the rubber band, and then I spin it like so, and then finish off with a number of loops around the top. Now that's not a very well tied bag because I spent more time thinking about how I was doing it and talking about it than actually tying it. And we're also trying to minimize the amount of air in these bags because we have limited space. So that's probably the biggest one. Uh, we'll chuck that in there. The rest of them are all gonna be small like this. Minimal air, minimal water. They're only gonna be in the bags for probably two or three hours. So we don't need to really worry too much about trapping lots of air in the bags. Let's just have a look at the lighting system of this tank before I start to take it off so we've got better access. The tank is primarily lit by four Gen 5 radions. And these are the XR15, so they're the small version. And having the four of these units across the tank really gives excellent spread. But this customer's gone one step further with his lighting system. He's added two of these Vitaminis. Now these put out uh, a blue light and they really do give you an excellent spread. And the combination of the Radeon and these Vitaminis is one of the reasons why this tank is doing so well. The SPS is absolutely cranking and the lighting system is a huge reason for that. It's come to my attention that camera and I bag similar but different at the same time. We all start the same, but it's all about the bag, uh, the rubber band that makes a difference. So seam to seam, one, two, then twist, rubber band, one loop, tighten it, spin, 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 and this is where it's different. I do a slight twist on the top little tag and then there. So all you have to do when you get the bag is to pull the little tab and then the, un the rubber band will unspin until it gets down to the first knot. So it doesn't just fling everywhere and then you're good to go. So lots of quality supplements for this tank. Uh, we've got Coral Essentials, Energy Plus, the Chroma Plus, uh, the amino acid, Coral power bacteria food, all sorts of good stuff. I've just decided I'm going to start to tackle the hardware on this system. And we have a clear filter roller, a roller mat. We've got a refugium light. There's a Red Sea skimmer uh, behind this refugium light with a CO2 scrubber. Uh, there's a Vectra M2 return pump, there's the Wave Makers as we mentioned, there's a KH Guardian. Uh, so many things we have to pull apart and uh, make sure that it all goes back together. Whenever we do relocations we always make sure that we've got as much information about the tank as possible. Uh, we always uh, ensure we've seen photos of the tank and um, if we can, we always try and uh, make a point of coming out and having a look at the tank so we know exactly what we're doing. Now, from the photos that I saw, my thought was that this was gonna be the hard part. All of these corals that had to be bagged up individually. But the more I get into it, the more I realize this is the hard part. We've got so many devices, so many power points, so many cables, and we have to make sure that each of these is disconnected and that everything is connected properly into the right power supplies, right controllers, so that everything works and we don't have any damage to the equipment in the whole process. So this is uh, becoming a, a bigger and bigger job than we ever expected.
One tip with I find with grabbing Giardini is you grab it from the base because the tentacles actually can give you a quite a powerful sting. So it's really good to just grab it from the base and give it a quick little quick little shake, try and make it close up so the flesh doesn't get damaged when it goes in the bag. Good to go. So here's the skimmer. Uh, uh, so it's a red seed, and uh, I think we'll probably have to give it a bit of a clean on the other end if we get time. But we're trying to take out as much as possible so that we can leave some things in the sump. Um, and the, the hardest part is going to be uh, for us just ensuring that everything goes back together. So the more we can leave in the sump, it doesn't add to the weight, the better. But definitely the skimmer comes out. Um, all right, next step. As you can see, Reef Beard is draining water from the tank into our barrels. Now hopefully we're going to be able to put the bulk of these uh, rock structures into our barrels. I'm a little bit scared looking at the size of these structures as to how well they're going to fit through the opening of the barrel. So uh, we'll give it a go in a sec, then we catch the fish out, make sure everyone is on oxygen, so we've got a bubbler in there, and then we just have to think about how we're going to get this tank downstairs, dis disassemble the lighting system, and work out if we can lift the cabinet with the sump in it. So Reef Beard's just putting the candy cane of the hose up into the tank. We've got about maybe 60, 100 litres or so, something like that. We're going to drain out onto the road and then we can start the struggle with moving the actual tank. So we've got slippery stairs because it rained last night. We've got a hose over the stairs and this is definitely a two person lift. But the tank is a four person lift. So we've got two and one and a half. So we're gonna hopefully be okay. Um, but we won't know until we try.
So, <laughs> uh, we're going to keep it together. Yep. Wow. Right. So this is the water box return line, and uh, with all of these different things running on the tank, it's actually interesting that there's no, there's nothing running off the manifold. And one of my rules when doing relocations like this is to make sure you don't lose the O-rings because if you lose the O-ring on the plumbing, then it can be impossible to get a seal on your tank and you've, you're really screwed. But uh, anyway, this is the return line. I'm gonna put this straight downstairs and then we'll take off the drains. So funny that I would actually make a fuss about the O-rings. The uh, underside grommet was stuck to the bottom of the tank and uh, not something I'd normally miss, but luckily that Reef Beard was here to save the day. He pointed it out and I'll go put this with the return plumbing downstairs. fish that we're not taking with us today is the stripe and the stripe is going into this tank which is a bit of a quarantine uh, set up uh, with a clam and a few other things. In fact it's probably the biggest clam I've seen in quite some time. So uh, this stripe is quite interesting in that at some point it's lost its tail but it is completely happy, completely healed and I've actually got a, a vague recollection that this guy might have been in the store like that. So it looks a little bit like a sunfish. Pretty cool, stripy sunfish. Um, so what we'll do is we'll slide it forward on the stand, we'll get a feel for the weight, um, and then make a call as to how we're gonna get it down the stairs. So we'll just slide it, just the tank. Just the tank. Yeah, that's the tank. Well, let's, let's stop. Are there bulkheads with these ones? I can't remember. So it's not like the Red Sea? No. Okay. All right, so we'll slide it forwards. Uh, we'll get a feel for it. Okay, so I reckon this is pretty easy. Uh, I reckon going down me backwards is definitely the go. Uh, how do you feel? I don't think we need glass grips. No, I think we should be fine. Do we do a safety stop at the thing just to like re? We can do. I don't know if it's going to help. Well, we can just put one back. Yeah. yeah. Done. So we've realized that we don't really have, uh, well, we haven't taken enough out for us to be able to carry it down easily. So we're gonna take the sump out. We were really hoping to avoid this, but those stairs are nasty and we need to take out all the weight possible. So we've taken out all the equipment and I should be able to just slide the sump forwards. Wow. Must be glued to the base. Oh, there we go. All right. Most important thing when moving a sump: do not crack it. Um, should we just go straight downstairs? Yep. Yep. It is a bit wet. Uh, can we go out and spin? Yep. <laughs> All 
Right, two of the three hardest things to get downstairs are down. Once we've got this cabinet on the ground floor, we will be happy. And down. Three, two, one. So now we've got the difficult things down. We're going to bring the last of the whatever else, the mess we got upstairs, we'll bring that down and we'll load up the two utes. We're a little bit behind time. I reckon we've got half an hour to tie it down. Uh, we'll get some lunch. <laughs> and then we'll be on the other side and we'll put this all back together. Foam lids are really handy. They are great to help protect tanks on back trailers. They're a really good buffer zone. They're also really good at keeping stuff inside your actual box. Probably not a two person level. Okay, done. Everything is packed. We're halfway through this job. We've just got to get to the next site and set this tank back up again. Here we are at the second site. We're going to bring everything into the house, get it out of the sun, and then we'll start to assemble this tank. Almost winter in Brisbane, here in Australia, and uh, the worst thing is doing these relocations on hot days. And we thought this time of year would be fine, but it's uh, it's probably 30 degrees Celsius, so we just can't win. Even in winter, it's uh, hotter than we would like for these jobs. <laughs>
we've moved location, we're at the new house now, we've got the cabinet in, we've got the tank in, we've got the sump in, we're pretty much ready to go, we're and to move the tank in. You ready? Let's go. So what we're doing is we've got our bulkheads uh, in position with the uprights and so we've just put some water into the overflow box to see if there's any leaks. One of the key uh, aspects of doing this sort of job is to making sure we have lots of natural seawater on hand. Now we have enough natural seawater on the back of the Colorado that we can fill this tank probably one and a half times. So we've got heaps of water. I'm going to start pumping some water into the tank. I want it to be about half full so that we can then add water from the barrels, the bags of the corals and um, I need it to be deep enough that we can start putting the coral structures back in, the rock and, um, and just trying to get it back to the same aquascape that it was previously. So uh, let's go fill this tank up. The safe word is Sasquatch. Sasquatch! So, uh, for anyone that uh, uses their glue conservatively, you might want to look away right now.
So here's my favourite fish of them all. Uh, we've got a pipefish that is doing so well in this tank and it is so cool. Look at that guy. That's excellent. Go back into the grass. So mission complete. We've finished our relocation of this beautiful tank and it's gone absolutely perfectly. We've got all of our fish and corals back in the tank. The corals are in practically the exact same spot as where they were originally. The fish are doing really well. You can see they're swimming around happily. They're not stressing at all. And all of our equipment is set up and running perfectly. Best of all, there were no leaks and we've had really uh, a perfect run with this relocation. So thank you so much for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!